everyone, welcome to UDT 2022 in Rotterdam, the Netherlands. The event specializes in undersea defense technologies. We are starting our coverage with French company Alcimar with their DPV for Special Forces. I am with uh, Rémi Lecomte, former combat diver, who not only is marketing this device, but helped design it. Uh, I present you uh, the diver uh, propulsion vehicle uh, named uh, Murin, dedicated uh, for uh, combat divers. Uh, this vehicle uh, is a new generation of uh, DPV. It can uh, transport two combat divers uh, fully equipped with uh, apparatus in front and backpack. This vehicle uh, is able uh, to do uh, 16 nautical miles at uh, 2 knots and uh, the maximum speed is uh, 4 knots. This vehicle uh, is uh, fitted with an advanced navigation system with uh, a real uh, inertial navigation system uh, FOB, fiber optic gyroscope, a real. If you do uh, a navigation around 10 kilometers, we have a maximum 5 meters of error. This is a very good uh, performance for uh, this kind of, of vehicle. This vehicle has the compatibility uh, with uh, submarine because uh, the diameter of the vehicle is uh, 53 uh, centimeters and uh, we have the cap capability with a NATO tor torpedo tube when we retract the, the thruster. You open, okay, and uh, you can retract very easy the thruster. You do the same to the exercise and you have the capability to uh, launch the vehicle by torpedo tube. Currently, uh, we have finished uh, the qualification of the, the vehicle and we follow uh, the mil standard uh, 810. is fully qualified uh, with uh, envir environmental qualification and uh, submarine qualification. Uh, we are now we are ready uh, to welcome a customer to uh, provide a dynamic demonstration. Uh, I'm in charge uh, to uh, provide and uh, to train uh, the diver to uh, test uh, the vehicle, and uh, we have the possibility, depend uh, the, the customer, to organize a night diving. and training topic is the deployment of UAVs from submarine. We are now on the booth of Israeli company Spare, who recently unveiled the Ninox 103, which is uh, pretty much a tube released from a submarine to launch a UAV. I am with uh, Boaz, business development director of the company. Boaz, good morning. Thanks for welcoming us. Thank you very much and good morning. So okay, well, can you tell us more about uh, Ninox uh, 103? Yeah, to the best of our knowledge, it's the first one in the world that was actually released from a submarine. We can see it over here, just floating in the water, and this is the actual capsule. It's being released from the submarine, floating automatically, surfacing to the water. This is a smart capsule. It uh, engages all the communication, satellites, etc. Once it is ready, it launches the drone into the air. Everything is done in the capsula and within the capsule. Uh, currently, we have just uh, the Vizint capability, meaning day and night sensors. It can perform fully automatic uh, mission and then just drop to the sea or go back to where you want it. And it can be also guided by um, command and control and all of that was already done and proven. The submarine can hand over the control of the UAV to special forces on the ground and we would then control the UAV with the tablet? Uh, that can be done also. Basically what we proved right now is that we can control it from the submarine. But yes, basically we can give the uh, uh, guidance to any other force that is within the same uh, 
environment and has the communication since we are basicing everything on a mesh technology. And uh, which kind of missions do you envision for the UAV? ISR, loitering munition? So this is really depends on the customer, the current customer that we have, which we cannot elaborate about for reasons you do understand. Uh, they want for ISR, just for ISR. Let's think about it like a very high and long distance periscope. Nowadays, in missions that you need to come close to the shore and see something, your periscope is very limited because it's very low. And as much as you have good optics over there, any obstacle would shut it down. Meaning a first line of houses or trees would shut your uh, line of sight. With this, you can go higher. You can go to seven kilometers and even more. So you can see all of that, go back, crash to the sea. Nobody knows you were there and you just start to transmit it. Not necessarily to the submarine, to anyone who is listening on the same channel. Uh, what's going to be the future? We are dealing also with um, loitering munition for the ground forces. That's the Viper that we are developing currently and in one year would be fully operational. Uh, so we know how to do that just as well. Uh, we, we are able to do it with the 103 just as well but really depends on the customer. We, we have the knowledge. We'll now be discussing sea mines, starting with DA Group from Finland. I am with the Chief Business Officer. Sir, good morning, thanks for welcoming us. Thank you very much, uh, good to have you here. So what uh, do, do we have here, what type of sea mines is this? Well, what do we have here? This is a, the most modern influence uh, moored sea mine that is available on the market at the moment. It's called Turso MM30, and MM30 is our moored mine version which has uh, 300 kilos of high explosives inside. How can uh, this mine be triggered? What makes it a next generation sea mine? Well, this version has now all the options for the sensor sets available. So in addition to the traditional magnetic pressure and acoustic signatures, we are also having sensors for photonic and uh, UEP. And all of these five can be used as a triggering mechanism in, in algorithms. And uh, I believe you unveiled this model for Euronaval 2020, Euronaval Online. Uh, is this still a project or is it in production? What's the status? Uh, this is ready ready to be deployed, so the lead time at the moment is 12 months, so orders in. <laughs> we have been developing Siemens uh, for, for decades and uh, thanks to the Finnish Navy having a sea mine as their main weapon, uh, sea mine knowledge really is in Finland and we are constantly developing sea mines, new sea mine technology. Uh, the sensor sets and also other features of the Siemens. This particular version is designed to be deployed from any surface ships, uh, but also from aircraft. Uh, without any modifications, this can be airdropped from helicopters, which are hovering, uh, with some modifications also from fixed wings. DA Group is also cooperating with uh, another company uh, for another type of Siemens on display here at uh, UDT. Uh, this is true, yeah. On, on our neighboring stand you can see Blocker, which is our version for uh, bottom mine. So this is the uh, moored mine version. Uh, in both of these we have a DA Group uh, sensor sets and electronics. And in both of these we have Foxit uh, high explosives, which are making this extremely safe, but yet devastatingly in power. We are now with the former chief of the Finnish Navy, Admiral Kari Takanen, to learn more about the use of sea mines in the Finnish Navy. Admiral, good morning. Thanks morning. for your time and uh, answering our few questions. So can you tell us more about uh, the use of sea mines in uh, the Finnish Navy? Yeah. Finland has been using sea mines as long as our Navy has, independent Navy has existed from the early 1900s. And, uh, uh, during the Second World War, mines were used extensively in the Gulf of Finland, for example, with over 50,000 mines led by uh, the Germans, Finnish and, and the Soviet Union. They were naturally most contact mines, the Germans also had some influence mines. Nowadays, mine is the second important strategic weapon of the Finnish Navy, the second one being the surface-to-surface -surface missile. Today we use, uh, in addition to all the contact mines, still from the Second World War era, we use modern influence mines that can be seen here in the background. So it's it's very important and, and cost-effective weapon for a defender of its coastline to use sea mines, and that's why we use them in Finland. 
Regarding a current uh, topic, Finland uh, probably joining NATO. Uh, in your opinion, what will be the impact for the Finnish Navy uh, once Finland joins uh, NATO? For the Navy side, probably not so big because we have been interoperable with NATO navies and NATO countries uh, for, for decades already being part, part of the NATO Partnership for Peace program and uh, our, our officers have been trained in, in NATO countries and languages English and our ships are interoperable with link systems with NATO ships. I would think there will be more exercises and a more, more of course, in exchange of information, situation awareness. We we'll bring a lot, lot, but the most important things, as our politicians say, also the, our supreme commander, the president, Finland's role in the navy would be to defend our country, and and uh, the, and that means also that our navy would mostly operate in in the northern Baltic to defend our country.